Hello my lovely lads, this is going to be a longer video and uh, I will try to elaborate why I believe Sean O'Malley is the best long range striker in the UFC and uh, first of all I'm gonna tell you if you have UFC on Fight Pass, which I believe you do, maybe you should uh, take a look at his videos. First of all, I suggest you to watch his video against David Nuzo, LFA 11 and uh, Alfred Karshakian. I suggest you to watch those two fights. That is my piece of advice because, first of all, um, uh, to kick off, uh, to kick off uh, with this aspect of the game, I need uh, to tell you that Sean O'Malley, Sean O'Malley did an amazing job with the long-range strikes, with some uh, techniques and uh, styles that were pretty much underestimated in the UFC. First of all, I'm uh, telling you that he is arguably the best taekwondoka who adjusted his uh, fighting style to the UFC. And uh, he's having great step back forward, great step back backward. And Sean O'Malley is also very much known for his outstanding performance. Uh, I mean, uh, striking inside the pocket. He's one of the rare taekwondo fighters who know to strike inside the pocket and who know to exchange bombs, who know pretty much to do a great job. And uh, I am now looking at some of his fights. Okay, this is maybe I need prelims. Okay, I'm gonna need prelims. I'm now looking at UFC 248. Okay, prelims. Okay, Sean O'Malley versus Jose Alberto Quinones. Okay, I'm gonna analyze fight by fight. Now you will see why I believe. Now we are uh, going into the fight with Jose Quinones. You know that Sean O'Malley was able to knock him out cold in the first round. And Jose Quinones used to be one of uh, pretty much aggressive fighters. He was known for his aggression. But I was pretty much shocked when I've seen uh, Sean O'Malley outworking him pretty much easily. And this is Sean O'Malley one and only time at UFC 248 headline in the contest of the preliminary card. Yeah, no, this is the first time, one and only time that he hasn't fought in the preliminary card. He was riding on a score of 10 0 He used to be a heavy favorite, but uh, Sean O'Malley's taekwondo performance used to be outstanding on those days, and he came as a great taekwondo striker with great stance switching. He was able to fight from both sides, and then Mergliotta used to be the referee on that fight. Now, I am going to tell you that uh, Jose Alberto Quinones made a lot of mistakes in this fight. And now I'm going to analyze fight by fight. Sean O'Malley kicks off with the leg kick. He kicked off with the John Jones kick. Now you see. Now you see how he cuts angles. Now see. Cutting angles. John Jones kick. I'm talking about Jose Alberto Quinones fight. Now look at this. He's cutting angles. Another kick by Sean O'Malley. Front kick. Quinones is attacking. O'Malley is backpedaling. Look at this feel of the distance. He evades the leg kick. Look at this. Sean O'Malley is pushing. I mean, every single leg kick is evaded. Look at this feel for the space. Sean O'Malley again changes angle, throws a leg kick, and Kinonez is trying to march forward, but he is slower. You see, Kinonez is looking way, way slower in this fight. Looking 10 times slower. Kinonez is trying to switch stance again, push kick for Sean O'Malley. O'Malley is changing stances like a natural. Look at those side steps. He's also changing stances. He's moving laterally. Look at how he moves laterally. Just look. I mean, of course, you have UFC on fight pass. And uh, I'm talking about this. Now look at this. Again, a front kick and a spinning back kick. This time he didn't land on the rib of Kinonius. Kinonius is trying to press him against the fence. Somali continues circling, going to the left. See this feel of the distance. Sean O'Malley is very, very dangerous out of long range. Calf kick missed. 
again lateral moving now you see this dance this dancing to, 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 to the side dancing 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 Sean O'Malley with a big right hand middle kick by Sean O'Malley brutal taekwondo middle kick you see step inside and the taekwondo middle kick and see this movement on the fence he is also having amazing uh, feel for the fence every single time he's on the fence his legs are parallel his legs are standing parallel now I'm talking about the technical aspect of the game one two by O'Malley you see one two he's throwing of a long range great chirugis and the first time Kinonyas touches him O'Malley counters and again high kick by Sean O'Malley Kinonyas trying to shoot in but O'Malley is hammering hard and that's a great knockout you see O'Malley countered with a great uppercut then a great high kick and he annihilated Alberto Kinonyas now what I want to pinpoint in this fight is the fact that uh, O'Malley really did a wonderful job here. I mean, technically talking about the technical aspect of the game, I was shocked. I was literally shocked with uh, what O'Malley did. Now we are going to go at his UFC 250 performance. Now I'm going to watch his UFC 250 performance. He kicked off the preliminary card. And, uh, yeah, hold on just a second. I need to find that fight. Sugar Show on Mali. Yeah, Sugar Show time. Okay. Now I'm going to talk about his fight versus Eddie Vineland. I'm telling you which fight I'm talking right now. And I'm going to tell you how he annihilated all of his opponents. Vylon used to be first WC Bantamweight champion, most knockouts, knockdowns in UFC, WC Bantamweight history at the moment, and fought most fight time. But he was, uh, he was uh, on the sunset of his career back then. Now let's transition to the fight. Okay, we're going to transition to the fight. Sean O'Malley used to be an undefeated guy with a score of 11-0. That was a really much nice piece of play. Now, when I'm re-watching this, I'm going to tell you, at that moment, Sean O'Malley used to be a minus 5-0, huge, huge favorite. And uh, the problem with that in Ireland uh, was the fact that he was trying to wrestle too much. And when you're trying to wrestle against a guy with such a great defense, with such a great takedown defense, with such underrated ground game, and with such a great taekwondo movement, it's so, so hard to shoot in. It's so hard to drag that fight to the canvas. And Eddie Weiland uh, was very slower in this fight, 24-13-1. I understand that he was uh, at, the sunset, uh, at the sunset of his career. I can agree to that argument, but uh, I'm now talking that uh, Sean O'Malley could have done uh, way way more if he wanted to i believe he was just fighting to win sean o'malley was eight when eddie vineland made his professional mma debut now when you're facing a legend no i'm going to tell you now i'm going to break down every single aspect of the game all right Sean O'Malley again, Stan Switch, again kicking off with John Jones' kick. Again, John Jones' kick, middle kick missed, but O'Malley is not letting Vineland get close. You see how he changes angles. He is constantly staying away from the center line, middle kick by O'Malley, and the high kick missed, Vineland was pretty much lucky. You see, people are going to say a typical Taekwondo fighter would constantly be on the center line, but Sean O'Malley is constantly away from the center line. You see how he moves laterally, how he doesn't let his opponent get close, how he holds the distance. It's almost impossible to catch him on the feet. See O'Malley circling. Middle kick for O'Malley again. And the high kick missed again. Vineland was brutally lucky here. Vineland was extremely, extremely lucky here because Sean O'Malley missed on two occasions. Now, I am going to tell you... Eddie was very lucky in the first 45 sets. Ludo, your targets missed. Okay, now let's go. 
I mean, if this landed to the head, it would have been a clean knockout. You see, Vineland is pressuring hard, but every single time Vineland pressures, O'Malley opens the angles. Vineland is trying to close the angle, O'Malley opens and counters with a big right. Big left kick for O'Malley and the push kick for Sean O'Malley. Sean O'Malley finally ate one strike here. It was a big right and O'Malley is trying to counter again. Vineland is pressuring very, very hard. <coughs> hard pressure on the end of Vineland. Big right by Vineland and it looked like Sean was rocked for a sec, but you see, he is changing stances. He is waiting Vineland to make a mistake. And Vineland is going to make a mistake sooner or later because he is very aggressive. Big spinning back kick by Sean O'Malley. Now, what I want to say, 320. Big chuggy counter spinning back kick. Great Taekwondo. It was a great Taekwondo kick. Now, let's transition forward. Middle kick by Sean O'Malley and a great hook. And the spinning heel kick just missed. He switched stance and missed with the spinning heel kick. Big right hand for Sean O'Malley and that's it. You see, he changed. Bang. You see, he exchanges. And uh, Edin Vineland marches forward and bang. Big right hand. That's a great Shirugi. Shirugi to the head KO. Also a Taekwondo punch. But see, every single... Every strike was a long range strike. Every single strike was long range strike in this fight. So Marlon Vera fight we are going to skip. And there is one fight that is pretty much entertaining. Uh, we are going to skip Marlon Vera's fight. And uh, I need to transition to the next fight of Sean O'Malley, which is the fight against Thomas Almeida. And uh, that is going to be just to find the just to find the uh, fight pass. One second. Uh, 2021. I need to find. I need to find UFC 260. So. Uh, okay. Okay, I need to six, so I'm gonna scroll down. We're gonna watch the fight against Mao Tai expert. This is Sean O'Malley or Pepper Sean fighting Thomas Almeida. Okay, we're heading into that fight. Okay. Thomas Almeida used to be a more serious opponent. Now we got an opponent with a decent Mao Tai background. And look at this. They touch gloves. O'Malley again kicking off with the John John strike. One, two again, long range strike. Leg kick again by O'Malley. O'Malley is trying to weather the storm here. Again, long range strike, front kick to the body. Leg kick again by Sean O'Malley. Another leg kick. Big left hand. I mean, every single time Almeida tries to get close, O'Malley is ahead of him. See, one, two, those Chirugis are landing on spot. Landing spot on pretty much those Chirugis. O'Malley moving sideways. Excellent job. He ate a calf kick. Now, great calf kick by Sean O'Malley. This is something you don't learn in Taekwondo, so... It's another long range calf kick. That's something you don't learn in Taekwondo. Almeida is also pretty much skillful in changing angles as well as uh, you can see here. Now see, a lot of fainting on the end of Sean O'Malley. Almeida is standing like this, like a shoot boxer. You see narrow stance by Almeida 
And O'Malley is like this, very much relaxed. Almeida is missing with hands. See, long-range strikes are creating a significant amount of damage. Big left hand for Sean O'Malley. Spinning back kick. Now, what am I going to say? 3-24, round 1. Stand switch. Spinning back kick to the body. Clean taekwondo strike. Clean taekwondo counter. Now let's go forward. Let's uh, rewind this. Okay, let's play it now. Big punch of the clinch. You see, O'Malley is pretty much vulnerable in the clinch. Like kick by O'Malley far countered and followed by a big left hand, but O'Malley is vulnerable in the clinch, but as long as the fight remains uh, long range, O'Malley is brutal. O'Malley is very brutal as long as he keeps the fight uh, long range. Like kick by Thomas Almeida. But as long as O'Malley is uh, on big distance, he is controlling the fight. See, fainting, 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 fainting. Almeida nearly caught a kick, but O'Malley was able to save himself. You see this slide in Chirugi with the penetration step. Big counter by Sean O'Malley and the knee. And Sean O'Malley doesn't want to engage in the clinch. You see, he is fighting pretty much smart because he doesn't want to engage in the clinch. Big leg kick by Sean O'Malley. Sean O'Malley is constantly increasing the distance while his opponent is trying to decrease it. And that's creating problems on the end of Almeida. O'Malley checked this calf kick and then continued with a side kick to the body and O'Malley drops him with a big left but O'Malley doesn't want to follow up you see clean taekwondo strike you see low to spinning heel kick taekwondo strike taekwondo strike and another spinning heel kick at 148 O'Malley dropped him with a big left but he didn't want to engage he didn't want to follow up O'Malley with one two you see O'Malley's uh, lateral movements and feints are brutal. Fly knee by O'Malley. Almeida is pressed against the fence, but O'Malley is fighting like a drunk master. You see how he switches? Big chirugi by O'Malley and the big left hand, big left hook. But these are modified hooks and the push kick for O'Malley. O'Malley actually rocked the guy with a long range hook. Now a big one too. Like kick for Thomas Almeida. Push kick O'Malley. 26 to 4 in significant strikes. He just speaks about the level of domination. Spinning heel kick for Sean O'Malley, but he ended up on the canvas and works his way back up. Yeah, he ended up on the canvas, but he nearly caught Almeida with a spinning heel kick. Now O'Malley switching stances. And John John's side kick. O'Malley is righty, but he is switching stances a lot. He is trying to confuse his opponent with uh, switching uh, stances. And the high kick, you see this high kick, uh, all 30, clean Dolly Chagi counter, clean Dolly Chagi also, O'Malley rocked, Almeida with long range hook. I'm just talking about the topic, this is topic and he misses with the spinning heel kick at all 23. And great slide in Chirugi with the penetration step. Big left hand by O'Malley. And Almeida hit, hits him every single time they engage in the clinch. Almeida is getting the advantage. See? O'Malley moving laterally. Great lateral moves by Sean O'Malley. You see, pretty much he rocks his opponent. Every single time he rocks his opponent with uh, long range techniques and every single time they are inside the clinch Almeida is creating him a problem so we're going to skip to round two now he landed a high kick too and rocked him with one two long range hook after a feint and he landed uh, he landed also left 
a left high kick in the same round. Now we are going to go into round two. Okay, let's go. In round two, we've got pretty much a great domination of Sean O'Malley on the feet. See this. Excellent jab, excellent distance holding. And you see when he switches stance, how Maida tries to close the range. He is trying to capitalize with that big right hand, but he is unable to as O'Malley won't gonna let him with the front kick. This front kick, in the case of Sean O'Malley, serves to keep the distance and to not let his opponent get close. 1-1-2, one, one, see 1-1-2, one, one, he is throwing these big bombs and the punch to the body. Excellent punch to the body and the big leg kick with Sean O'Malley. This is pretty much a big leg kick that landed clean. And uh, from what I've seen, Sean O'Malley is pretty much playing cat and mouse game with his opponent here. Almeida trying to like kick, but he's too short, you know. Almeida comes from Maltai background, which is a problem. Which is a problem and again spinning back kick for Sean O'Malley, but this time he missed. Against the Taekwondo guy, the problem is because Maltai kicks are slower, they are not uh, as explosive. But you see, you see now when did mistake happen. You see 350 mid-range strike, strike and Almeida drops him. Because he chopped him down, but O'Malley worked his way back up pretty much instantly. But I'm just saying, leg kick again. You see, O'Malley is not vulnerable to leg kicks that much. But the problem with Sean O'Malley was the fact that it was a mid-range strike. I'm trying to break it down. It was a mid-range strike. A big left hand for Sean O'Malley. Another big left right. O'Malley is now trying to check those kicks. Which might not be the smartest idea for a Taekwondo guy, but yeah, left, right. And again, great John John strike, but by Almeida, another great John John strike. Every single long range strike is uh, landing pretty much on point. Almeida is trying to go with these penetration steps, but he is not creating a damage. Again, big left. And again, violent uh, long range counter by Sean O'Malley. But it seems it seems he has to backpedal now, like kick by Almeida. He has to backpedal because one, two lands, you see, sliding step forward, one, two lands for O'Malley. But the problem is now because O'Malley's fighting style is wasting a lot of energy. No, O'Malley is moving a lot. So. In a five-round fight, this might be a problem because this uh, this fighting style is wasting a lot of energy. Almeida is trying to land with a spinning heel kick, but he is too slow. O'Malley misses with a dolio chagi. And uh, the point is, O'Malley is extremely fast. His kicks are at least uh, three times faster than uh, his opponent's kicks. And that's something that creates a difference here. That pretty much creates a difference in this fight. Like kick again for Sean O'Malley. Almeida constantly misses because he is too short, you know. O'Malley is holding this fight long range and Almeida stays too short. One, two, Almeida. Every single time he comes mid-range, he hits Sean O'Malley, but O'Malley is uh, wisely keeping this fight long range. You see, this is a clean taekwondo move. See this feint, see this feint. Now I'm going to show you 125, round 2, uh, Taekwondo feint. Now I am proving you that I have a knowledge of this sport. See, this is clean Taekwondo stance by Sean O'Malley now. A lot of Taekwondo stances, middle kick again. Leg kick missed by Almeida. O'Malley with 1-2. Excellent sprinting jab and 1-2 for Sean O'Malley. Great penetration steps on the end of Sean O'Malley. He keeps keeping this fight long range. Leg kick by Almeida. Again, mid-range strike lands, uh, lands pretty much closely. 
O'Malley keeps running around the circles. And uh, another John John strike. You see, this is a side kick, jumping side kick uh, to the leg by Sean O'Malley. And the flying knee missed. This is where Sean O'Malley made a mistake, and now he is on the back. Almeida is trying to hoop on the top of Sean O'Malley, but this is not going to work because Sean O'Malley has pretty much underestimated ground game. He's having pretty, pretty much underestimated ground game. Almeida leg kicks him to end the round. Another round where Sean O'Malley pretty much dominated. Now we're going to head into round three. Glove touch. Again, leg like kick for O'Malley. More powerful and violent strikes. And again, front kick serves to keep the fight long range. Technically, watching O'Malley is defo, defo, the most efficient. The most efficient long-range striker. Again, like kick by O'Malley, very much technical aspect of the game. Very technical like kick by Sean O'Malley. More jabs been thrown. O'Malley again throws the leg kick. Almeida now missing again. You see, whenever Almeida tries to go with a leg kick or a long-range strike, this is not going to land. O'Malley counters with a big left and counters with a big right hand. Almeida misses with a leg kick. This is a long range. You know, Sean O'Malley is pretty much skillful in keeping this fight long range. O'Malley with a spinning back kick. And a high kick by Sean O'Malley, followed by 1-2. Almeida trying to engage, but O'Malley returns to the distance again. He returns to long range again. 1-2 and again big left. He returns to long range again, Sean O'Malley. Again front kick and Almeida cannot march forward. Almeida knows he's down on the scorecards, but there's nothing he can do. That's a problem. There's literally nothing he can do here. Almeida misses with the left. He is trying to cut angles, which is a big mistake against Sean O'Malley. Now you will soon see why. He's leaving himself open. O'Malley awaits from the leg kick. Fighter is inside the clinch and O'Malley stays away. He keeps the fight standing. Almeida is getting over-aggressive. And his over-aggressive is going to cost him. You see, he marches forward. Lateral move by Sean O'Malley. 1-2 Almeida. A leg kick again for Sean O'Malley. Almeida's kicks are way slower and he's looking pretty much tired in this fight. Yeah, Almeida is looking pretty, pretty much tired, pretty much exhausted. Like kick by Almeida, Sean O'Malley. Now, you must see this strike. You must see this strike. 157, round 3. Spinning right. Spinning right hand. A great tornado kick. But he missed. That's a problem because Sean O'Malley missed that one. Unfortunately, but that was a great example of a taekwondo strike. O'Malley keeps in lateral, Almeida keeps missing those leg kicks, and Almeida trying to soften up those legs, but O'Malley ducks under a great ducking by Sean O'Malley. O'Malley shoots in. No, this was just a feint. No, great job by Sean O'Malley. Just a great job. Almeida misses with a spinning back kick. And you know, when it comes to technicality, Sean O'Malley is definitely way better. He is looking way, way better. But Almeida is showing all the heart of this world. Big left by Sean O'Malley. And again, big left hand. He continues peppering Almeida. And Almeida was out. 
And when Almeida tried, uh, when Almeida tried to march towards Sean O'Malley, he got countered by a big left. You know, he got countered by a big left while it was a long range, while uh, O'Malley was on long range. O'Malley countered him with a big left, and uh, he changed angle, which led uh, to a miss, to a miss for Thomas Almeida, and Thomas Almeida was unable to continue the fight. Now you will. Now I will take a look at the replay. What exactly happened? See, I need to take a look at the replay. Let's see. John John strike. Yeah, he caught him with that big left. He caught him with big left to the chin. And then Almeida was out. Omali pounded him one more time on the canvas. And that was all he wrote. So I just need to say that Omali destroyed Almeida only because of his excellent long-range bombs. It was not because of short-range strikes. It was because of long-range bombs. Now we are going to analyze his fight against Chris uh, Moutinho. Okay. Uh, uh, just to hit the timestamp. Yeah, I just need to find this now. Give me, give me a second. I just need to find it on Fight Pass. Hold on. A replay. Uh, I'm just searching in this Fight Pass library. O'Malley then hurt himself badly after this fight. Man, but this was an epic war. This was such an epic war between Sean O'Malley and Chris Moutinho. I am lucky because Moutinho got a shot. Moutinho, well, Chris Moutinho got a lifetime opportunity in this fight. And he is one of the most aggressive guys I've ever seen. Maybe he likes him footwork, but he doesn't like him heart. He doesn't like him bravery. And I'm so glad because UFC, because UFC gave him this opportunity. I really think that I deserved uh, this opportunity. So, yeah, I'm uh, also going to analyze. I'm also going to analyze his fight against Holly and Paiva and Pedro Munoz. I'm not going to fight to analyze the fight against Petrian because uh, O'Malley was making a lot of mistakes in that fight and he didn't win it. But uh, I believe he didn't win it. But never mind. I mean, these are judges. Judges said. Because in that fight, Jan was cutting angles too well, and uh, I cannot show in that fight how much, uh, how many good, how many good moves Sean O'Malley made. So, I'm going to analyze Moutinho fight, Paiva fight, and the uh, fight. So, look at this. O'Malley was riding on a record of 13-1 back then, and uh, he used to be a minus 1,000 favorite. Now you're going to say, Vlad, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? I mean, who gives a damn about this? Well, I do. I do actually, I actually do give a damn about this fight because this was a performance of the night, definitely for me. On the end of Chris Moutinho and on the other side, O'Malley was forced to backpedal in this fight. So this is a great example for analysis. Now you see this. Okay, when the fight gets underway, I'm going to tell you, Moutinho, Moutinho knew that his only chance was to be aggressive. You see, Moutinho spams punches. He is over-aggressive. O'Malley is running around the circles. Front kick, he is trying to control the distance. Moutinho knows he has to spam punches. That's his only way to win is to be aggressive. O'Malley with a long-range jab. Again, a long-range jab and a front kick. O'Malley constantly throws this long-range jab, keeping his hands down. But Moutinho is holding like this. He knows that he must spam punches or... That's his only way to win. On the other side, O'Malley has to backpedal. Push kick for O'Malley. Excellent job. He is collecting points here. He is really collecting points here. O'Malley doesn't want to go for a knockout. You see, Moutinho is spamming punches, but he is missing all over the place. See? Moutinho is missing all over the place. Big right hand for Sean O'Malley. Big, big right hand for Sean O'Malley. And the big leg kick. 
O Mali izvesti na Otto Energy, o si excellent counter, bež ono Mali big check hook counter, and Moutinho is constantly marching forward, a leg kick by Moutinho, and another leg kick, Moutinho is pressuring, you see, every single time, now I'm going to stop this, now I'm going to stop this, you see, every time Moutinho turned into a mid-range fight, he scored, he scored, so every time it was turned into a mid-range fight, now let's continue, you see, this is the same style of Chris Moutinho, Pretty much the same style. He is marching forward. He is getting over aggressive. Leg kick for Moutinho. You see, every time this is a mid-range fight, he is turning into his one. One, one, two by Sean O'Malley. And again, front kick. He is trying to keep Moutinho long range. He misses with the Dolio Chagi. Actually, Moutinho blocks. And uh, O'Malley is circling to the left. This circle to the left was a great example of a, of a sidestep. Big left. And Moutinho, Moutinho is constantly throwing those hooks, but check hook landed on the end of uh, Sean O'Malley. This check hook is creating a lot of damage. Moutinho with a brutal leg kick. And it was also a mid-range strike, you see. Every single time you see Sean O'Malley having a problem, it's a mid-range strike. The best long-range striker in the division and arguably, I believe, the best long-range striker in the UFC. Again, check hook. Moutinho is trying to spam with those punches. And you see how Mali blocked this middle kick. He blocked like this, which is another example of the Kondo block. And those check hooks are creating a lot of damage for Chris Moutinho. <clears throat> One, two for Sean O'Malley. Big punches to the head. But Moutinho is tougher than expected. Spinning heel kick didn't land clean. Moutinho is still standing on its feet. Push kick for Moutinho. And the leg kick every time. Mid-range strike. I'm telling you, mid-range strike. This was one of the best first rounds I've ever seen. I got to say. One of the best first rounds uh, I've seen that didn't end in a violent KO. Moutinho with a big hook. Every single time it's a mid-range strike, Sean O'Malley hits a shot. Every time it's a long-range strike, Sean O'Malley is able to evade. You see this left. This left hand, a long left hand, is a trademark of Sean O'Malley. Sean O'Malley was even trying to counter with the knee, now front kick. But Moutinho knows to fight, man, the guy is tougher than expected. Leg kick by Moutinho and another leg kick by Moutinho. Oh, leg kick is checked. And another leg kick, now Sean O'Malley is forced to counter. You see, Moutinho is giving him a hard time only because, uh, only because Sean O'Malley is forced to counter. No, Sean O'Malley ain't get used to countering. Uh, countering uh, like kicks because he's usually countering with movement now he has to counter with punches and that's a problem because uh, Moutinho might guess out on the other side Sean O'Malley might actually guess out too because his fighting style is wasting a lot of energy he has to fight that's a problem in this fight he simply had to fight but look at this he knows to cover up on the fence but now front kick and an excellent sidestep Sean O'Malley is fighting on the outside Oh, inside the pocket leg kick for uh, Chris Moutinho. It was a leg kick inside the pocket. One, two, three strikes for uh, Sean O'Malley. And Moutinho is saying, come on, man, let's go with the front kick. You can't make a damage. Big right hand again. The big left hook followed by a big right on the end of Sean O'Malley. But Moutinho is extremely persistent with marching forward. Big right hand for O'Malley. Even a knee lands to the head. One, two. Man, I'm so, I'm so shocked with Moutinho's ability to block those strikes with his head, but he's so tough, man. Big check hook by Sean O'Malley. Moutinho misses with a middle kick. But Moutinho was scoring points with leg kicks, and, uh, you know, the lack of footwork cost him uh, cost him a loss in this match. The, the problem was the lack of footwork, and Sean O'Malley rocked him with a big right, but Moutinho ended up on the top of him. O'Malley was trying to fish for the arse choke, and that's how round one ended. But got to say, it was a great display of power by both fighters. But this is... Uh, Sean O'Malley actually won this round because he was better long range. Spinning back kick. Oh, I just need to show you something. 4.55. Spinning back kick to the body. Taekwondo strike. 
This is Clint the Clondo strike on the end of Sean O'Malley. Front kick, clean the Clondo strike. But man, Moutinho is constantly like this. He's covering up like this. It's very, very hard to find a crack in his guard. Moutinho is speaking. He's saying, no, man, you can't do me anything. And O'Malley is creating a difference. He's creating some... He is creating some spaces here. You see the problem with guys like Moutinho, he has no muscles, man. But guys without muscles never get tired. Spinning back kick by Sean O'Malley. But it landed here, it landed to the elbow. More jabs by Sean O'Malley. Big right hand by Sean O'Malley and he exits with a side step to the right. Middle kick again for Sean O'Malley. And a high kick, but Moutinho does this to block. He prevents a high kick. Big jab for uh, Chris Moutinho. But O'Malley keeps fighting. You see this this uh, big left hand that landed on the outside. This big left hand landed on the outside. Excellent punch to the body for Chris Moutinho. Violent left, right, landed clean. Moutinho with a punch to the body. Big left by Sean O'Malley. And a high kick, you see? This 301. 301. Round two. A lead leg, Dolly Ochagi. Intercondo. That's a clean taekwondo, lead leg, Dolly Ochagi. Big jab landed here by Chris Moutinho. And another left, right. Again, long range striking by Sean O'Malley. More long range strikes. Now, the first time Chris Moutinho created the problem was when he pressed O'Malley to the fence, but O'Malley exited on his right. But the problem with O'Malley is the fact that he can't focus anymore. You know, he's throwing these long-range strikes, but he must make a mistake from time to time and create it into a mid-range bomb fest. Violent leg kick counter. It was also a taekwondo move, but, but a modified taekwondo move. O'Malley is moving to the left. More hooks for O'Malley and a push kick for Sean O'Malley. Big violent jabs. You see, when uh, Moutinho was spamming those punches, long range Chirugi landed at 128 of uh, round two and again long range chirugis these long range chirugis are creating such a difference between these two fighters and you know Moutinho is actually good in mid-range strikes etc but when it comes to long range strikes he didn't land a single one every long range strike goes in the favor of Sean O'Malley and see this excellent sidestep after one two after defensive counters See, Sean O'Malley is constantly fainting to the left, to the right. His body is never at the central line. He doesn't know the term central line. He ricochets off the fence and goes to the right. And Moutinho keeps chasing. O'Malley is hitting all the time. Uh, O'Malley lost his mouthpiece. One, two for O'Malley. He keeps backpedaling, landing one, two. Middle kick for Sean O'Malley. The big left hand. More jabs. Moutinho is constantly pressuring, but his kicks are pretty much slower. Oh, Moutinho rocked him with the big left. Now, I'm going to tell you... Uh, 
keeping a rock shown for a sec because it was a clinch punch. You see, it was a clinch punch on the break, on the separation, but Sean survived this. And now they were in the clinch. Moutinho was trying to press against the fence, but Sean was able to slip himself out of this position. He is pretty much good defensively. No, Sean is uh, displaying excellent defensive game, and Moutinho is still standing. We're heading into round three and uh, seeing the same game plan for Chris Moutinho while Sean O'Malley digs to the body and a great punch to the body by Sean O'Malley. Leg kick followed by a big left hand. Moutinho with a punch to the body again. Big left hand by Sean O'Malley. Big left hand counter. Push kick for O'Malley. Big left, right. Moutinho turns it into a close range combat. And uh, Sean O'Malley is ducking nicely. But uh, you see, Sean O'Malley is having a hard time in a close range combat. Again, long range strike, jab. A leg kick for Sean O'Malley, counter leg kick. Middle kick for uh, Chris Moutinho. And the leg kick again. More jabs been thrown. Big right hand counter. O'Malley landed 144 strikes to the head. But he is getting tired, you know. This is round three. He is ducking under, but Moutinho keeps pressuring all over the place. Nothing but a pressure on the end of Chris Moutinho. High kick for Sean O'Malley. He didn't land clean, but the punch did. O'Malley is running around the circles and Moutinho keeps pressuring again. O'Malley trying to go with the front kick. But these jabs are not creating uh, any damage on the end of Chris Moutinho. Not creating any damage though. More leg kicks. And another jab. And the end of Sean O'Malley. Big jab landed. Big right hand. And another big right hand. More great strikes on the end of Chris Moutinho. Really much more great strikes. O'Malley circling. And a big light kick on the end of Sean O'Malley. Moutinho is trying to turn it into a close range combat, but O'Malley counters with a big right front kick. And another front kick. One, two, Sean O'Malley. And a knee to the head. Now Moutinho is getting better. Every strike is a long range strike now. But O'Malley doesn't want to engage. Moutinho is just on some crazy adrenaline. It's still a long range combat. Great long range punch by Sean O'Malley. And another long range punch. Big left hook by O'Malley. Great long range punch. But Moutinho wants to march forward. He nearly landed a high kick. I say nearly. Big right. But this time, for the first time, Moutinho counters. Excellent taekwondo hit. Excellent taekwondo kick to the body by Sean O'Malley. Big left right again. And Moutinho keeps pressuring. O'Malley back pedals. High kick for Moutinho. And a jab for O'Malley. One, two, Sean O'Malley. 229 clear strikes. Wow, 230 significant strikes. What a match. Big left hand for uh, Sean O'Malley. Moutinho keeps marching forward. He's still staying in the game. Punch to the body again. Now push kick. I just don't understand why Herb didn't call to a stoppage. Big right. More heavy hands by Sean O'Malley. And that's... I don't understand why Herb Dean hooked in. You know, I don't understand why Herb Dean stopped this contest. That's something I don't understand, but... Uh, 
I don't understand why he stopped this contest because Moutinho was still in the game. But it is what it is. I mean, I'm just trying to pinpoint to the fact that Chris Moutinho was still in the game. So, trying to say... Trying to say that I just don't get the point of it. I just don't get the point of it. The fighter it. <clears throat> to some point it makes sense, but... To some point. Kali and Paiva versus Sean O'Malley. Sean O'Malley is heavier than Kali and Paiva. Then... Uh, uh, Now we're transitioning into how we apply the fight. This Hall and Pyro fight is gonna be is gonna be one of the greatest one of the greatest surprises Sean O'Malley has ever made and I'm going to break down why he did it. I'm really going to break down why he did it. He was riding on an MMA record of 14-1 at that point. Used to be minus 3 5 0 I don't understand why he was such a big favorite because how and Pyro was not a bum, maybe because Paiva was switching weight classes, I don't know, maybe because it was a short notice, I really got no idea. I really got no idea why. But Paiva made a lot of mistakes in this fight, 21-3 out of Santana Mapa, Brazil. I was actually expecting Paiva to fight close range and not to let that fight get struck to the ground, but something completely different happened. Something pretty much completely different happened in this combat, and I'm going to break it down right now. Jason Herzog was the free. And uh, let's see now why Sean O'Malley did a wonderful job in this fight. Okay, let's go. O'Malley switching stances and Paiva is not over aggressive. Middle kick for Sean O'Malley, great. Uh, great dolly chuggy to the body by Sean O'Malley. O'Malley is moving to the left, which is, and he's fainting. You see? You see this? I need to... You see this? 448 hip faint. Taekwondo move. Paiva fight. I'm now hitting those timestamps. Middle kick and Paiva nearly caught a kick, but he missed. <coughs> he missed to counter. He nearly caught a front kick. And Sean O'Malley starts to take down attempt. Paiva is trying to drag the fight to the ground by any means necessary, but he's kind of unable to at the moment. A light kick lands for Paiva. And the leg kick again for Howie and Paiva. Big left hand. More jabs for O'Malley. O'Malley is keeping this fight long range, which is a massive success on the end of Sean O'Malley, keeping this fight long range. Middle kick and Paiva nearly countered him with a big right. Oh, a nut shot. I didn't expect it was a nut shot, though. I haven't seen it coming that way, but I assume Sean O'Malley didn't do it intentionally. Let me see. Well, he touched. He touched a bit, but I'm watching now which else fight could there be. Okay, the fight is restarted.
Okay. Let's see now how is this going to play out. Sean O'Malley keeps changing angles. This is pretty much great sidestepping by Sean O'Malley. See, Paiva marches forward, he changes angles. He changes angle and uh, tries to and tries to control the range. But Paiva is not that aggressive like Mutinga. Paiva is actually very technical. Catch the leg, counter with the big right, but it's again a long range strike. And when it comes to long range strikes, Sean O'Malley is just a specialist. He's just a specialist at long range strikes. And the long range striking also. John John strike by Sean O'Malley. He is not letting how Empire get close. See? Sean O'Malley is increasing the distance every single time. With every step, he increases the distance. With every single step, he is not letting his opponent get too close. Big right. You see? Left, right. Left, right. How Sean O'Malley moves like a cat. And against the fence, he is moving like a cat. You see that uh, Paiva was even trying to foot stomp him. That's a desperation move. And the move of despair didn't, uh, didn't give results. It didn't give significant results. Excellent Dolio Chagi on the end of Sean O'Malley. Great counter. He even checks those leg kicks. Big jab, 1-2 for Sean O'Malley. Excellent 1-2 of long range, 1-2 again. Great long range jabs are landing on the end of uh, Sean O'Malley. More left hands. Paiva is having a hard time in this fight because he can't find the range. You see, every single time Paiva tries to get close, Sean O'Malley increases the distance. O'Malley with a big right. You see how O'Malley rocked him hard with a big right. It was a long range strike and he continued barraging against the fence. Unloading and storming big. He was heavily rocked and uh, Herzog had no choice but uh, to stop the fight. The truth is Sean O'Malley finished this fight out of mid range. That's true. He finished this fight out of mid range. But the strike that rocked him, it's a long range. Long range big right hand. Now, I just need to write. Okay. Now I'm going to watch uh, his uh, last fight that I'm going to analyze. I told you Patreon's fight, I have my own reasons because I don't want to analyze, but let's say it's fine. Uh, where is this? 276. 276. There comes 276. That fight between Sean O'Malley and Pedro Munchos. I'm loading it right now. Yeah, just to know I'm loading it right now. So I'm not doing pretty much, I'm just loading. Pedro Munchos. Okay, Munchos inside the octagon, Sean O'Malley inside the octagon. Jason Kurtzog is your referee. And I'm going to analyze now how what happened in that fight. 
Actually, that fight ended in a no contest, but I'm uh, going to use it for the technical aspect of the game. In round two, we had a controversial situation, but I'm going to tell you what happened. See? No glove touch, and Domali keeps the fight long range. You see? He keeps the fight long range. Like kick for Domali. Another like kick. <coughs> you see the Kondo feints. The Kondo feint. The Kondo feint with the hip. More the Kondo feints on the end of Sean Domali. You see now he is he is crossing his leg. He is crossing his legs now. Look at this. On the faint again. It's another great taekwondo feint and the high kick, more leg kicks and the leg kick for Munchos. Munchos is trying to... Munchos is really doing a good job uh, keeping this fight mid-range because Omal is increasing the distance, but uh, Munchos is having also good step drag forward, step drag backward. He comes from shoot boxing and this comes like, this comes like a natural big right hand for Sean Omali. And a big like kick for Sean O'Malley. Again, great step drag forward by Pedro Munchos. Pedro Munchos is doing a violent job with his step drags forward. Excellent jobs again. Big left for Munchos. A push kick for Amali. Munchos is actually a tougher opponent for Amali for two reasons. First of all, he has excellent step drag forward, step drag, step drag backward. That is number one. Oh, Mali was trying to land with the spin heel kick, he didn't land. And also the, his running leg kicks are brutal. His running leg kicks are brutal. You see how brutal his running leg kicks are? And he increases the angles, he opens the angles. Mokos actually comes from shoot boxing, and they do have that, that great leg kicks. It is pretty much similar to Mao Tai leg kicks. Long range 1-2 for Sean Mali. It seems we've seen uh, an illegal move. At 153 mark of uh, round uh, one. Ow, oh, ow, oh, it really was a nut shot. Yes, it was unintentional though. Yeah, an intentional nut shot, but it was a nut shot. You can't say it wasn't. Now we're going into the next phase of round one. Actually, in round one, we, we've seen outsmarting. Fighters were trying to outsmart each other. And uh, the problem uh, the problem with this was the fact that uh, Pedro Munchos was also showing great step drag forward, step drag backward. Pedro Munchos is actually very skillful in controlling the central line on the other side. Yeah, he landed uh, 16 leg kicks. He was thinking that those uh, leg kicks are gonna smash uh, the chicken legs of Sean O'Malley, but he didn't. He didn't play through that way. It played through other way around. Now Sean O'Malley can actually take a bit into the legs. You see, he's eating leg kicks, but he's uh, like fine, no problems. No, he is changing angles, moving sideways. Now switching into a taekwondo stance, into a taekwondo orthodox stance.
high kick attempt for Mo was a Mali blocks, but it was not a slow high kick like in the case of Chris Mutinho. <coughs> Pedro Munoz again with a great leg kick. Omal is marching forward, goes for a high kick. He didn't land clean. You see, every single time Omali tries to increase the distance, his opponent is also intervening. His opponent is also decreasing. All 30 great spinning back kick to the body. You see, all 30 step and spinning back kick to the body. Taekwondo. Uh, let's see. I like kick again for Pedro Munchos. And again, another jab. Munchos is a master of uh, fighting on the central line. You know, that's Pedro Munchos, a master of fighting on the central line. Spinning heel kick missed by Munchos. O'Malley is fainting with those spinning heel kicks. And again, spinning back kick missed by here. The same Munchos was trying to go for a Brazilian kick. But it didn't land clean. I'm just trying to see the scorecard on my phone. Okay, let's see round two. I'm now trying to check the stats. I'm trying to check the stats, how it goes with the stats. Okay, let's see how is it going to play out in round two. Sean O'Malley was eating too many leg kicks in this fight, but there is one thing he was doing properly. These are those counters with big rights. Big rights were pretty much his uh, weapon in this fight. Those kicks created more damage, that's true. But Sean O'Malley was doing an amazing job, just amazing job with uh, those left rights. You see front kick to create the distance. Now when Munkos go, goes for a front kick, now I want to... I want to explain something. Munchos goes for a front kick. Misses. Omalets, every single front kick landed. More jabs. Another violent jab. One, two again for Omali. A spinning heel kick missed. But you see, Monchos is doing a great job with his step drags forward, step drags backward. He is really doing a wonderful, a wonderful job. The leg kick for Monchos. Big right. Another big right and a middle kick. Omali is controlling the distance pretty much nicely. You see, he is switching stances. Now he is staying on the central line, which is something he usually doesn't do, but against Munkos it's almost impossible to stay away from central line because Munkos is fishing, Munkos is adjusting. Every single time Omali changes angle, Munkos is trying to return the fight onto the central line. Great jabs for Omali. One, two for Omali. Again, brutal leg kick for Pedro Munchos. Omali counters with a big left. Finally, we've seen a great example of a big left on the end of Sean Omali.
You see this? Now this is the controversial moment. When O'Malley was marching forward, you see? People are going to say that, see, that this uh, was uh, that this uh, was an eye watch, but it actually was a punch, and it actually was a long range punch of Sean O'Malley that created uh, the damage. But it's questionable whether Munch was really wanted to see. You seen an eye watch though, but what about the punch before it? What about the punch before it? That's it. Now, in this uh, in this fight, what I want to say, Munchos is the guy who spoiled Sean O'Malley's game plans. Sean O'Malley's uh, game plan the most. But uh, I'd like to pinpoint that Munchos also, also played a great job. That Munchos also played a great job in spoiling the central line plan. Because he was trying to fight on the central line while Sean O'Malley was trying to stay away from the central line. Great step drags backward and forward on the end of uh, Pedro. Munchos also gave a hard time to Sean O'Malley. But I hope you enjoyed the analysis. And let's bring it on. Let's, let's go. Next time, I am going to share this in two chapters and you are going to have an easier, easier view of the whole of the whole. Sean O'Malley's career and why he is the best long-range striker. Also to say, people are going to say that I know nothing about the technical aspect of the game. I know a lot, believe me.